Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Peasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as glycogenolysis. Now if we look at the word glycogenolysis, it is telling us what does that mean. Glycogen comes from a polymer glycogen that is made up of glucose and lysis means to split it up. So in this process, we are basically going to break down this glycogen in order to get glucose from it. Now in normal circumstances, this glucose is usually available to us by food that we eat, specifically the carbohydrates that we eat. But if we take too much of that carbohydrate inside our body, then that excess amount of glucose will convert itself into glycogen. And this process is called as glycogenesis. This topic will be discussed in a separate video. The excess amount of glycogen will deposit itself in liver, in muscle cells, and in brain cells, specifically the astrocytes. The other organelles that can also deposit this glycogen are heart cells, kidney cells, and fat cells. Well, if too much glycogen deposits inside our fat cells, that could be a problem for us. That's why the times when we sleep and the people who fast and a little bit of exercise or diet, all these things give the opportunity to our body to convert this deposited glycogen back into glucose. Now the cells that are going to change this uh, glycogen into glucose have two different type of targets. The first type of target is to gain instant energy. For example, muscle cells, brain cells, and heart cells, they required instant energy. So when they are low on glucose, they will convert glycogen into glucose and take energy from it. On the other hand, the liver cells specifically, basically try to regulate the balance of this glucose present inside our blood. So if our blood is having low glucose, then this liver cell is going to convert this glycogen into glucose. Inside the blood, we have two different options. One is the low blood glucose and the other one is high blood glucose. In both the cases, they will provide signal to pancreas. Now this pancreas is going to release hormones. In case of low blood glucose, pancreas will release glucagon by alpha cells. And that will trigger the liver cells to convert glycogen into glucose. On the other hand, if we have a high blood glucose, then pancreas will release insulin by beta cells. And this insulin will order the glucose to take up by the fat cells. And by this way, they will provide balance to the blood glucose level. Okay, now if we just talk about a cell, whether it is present in the liver, in the heart, in the brain, wherever it is present, the conversion of glycogen into glucose usually occurs inside the cytoplasm of the cell. Now before we start discussing the process of glycogenolysis, we should understand the structure of glycogen. So glycogen is a very organized polymer and it has a protein in the center which is called as glycogenin. Now, this polymer of glycogen almost contains 30,000 glucose units in it. And they're not present randomly there. They are present in highly organized manner. As you can see in this picture, we have five layers. So there will be in total 12 layers where you can see a sequence of glucose attached to each other and branching off each other at several different points and all the chains have the same length in it. If we look more closely to this polymer, we need to keep certain things in our mind when the process will be discussed. The first thing is the glucose that are present at the end of each branch. Now in this picture, they are represented by a bigger orange circle. These glucose are called as non-reducing N-glucose molecule of the structure. Then we have these blue circles here. And these blue circle is basically the branch point. 
So after this blue circle, you can see the branch of glucose chains are occurring. And these chains are not random. They have almost 12 to 13 residues between each branch point. So they are highly organized. Now if we take more closer look than this to the polymer of glycogen, we can see that it is nothing else but glucose molecules that are attached with each other. Now glucose is a kind of hexagon molecule that is attached to each other in a chain. And it has six carbons in it. If we number them, we can say this is carbon number one, this is carbon number two, three, four, five, and six on the top. Then we can understand the type of bonds they are making with each other. So for example, between this glucose molecule and this glucose molecule, as you can see after numbering, that carbon number one is making a glycosidic bond with the carbon number four of the next glucose molecule. That's why this bond is called as alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. Make sense? Okay. And on the branch point, like over here, on the branch point, we can see that carbon number 6 of the chain can make bond with carbon number 1. So that's why the bond formed between the two glucose molecules at the branch point is called as alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. Okay, now we understand the structure of glycogen. Let's start the process of glycogenolysis. So this is apparently the glycogen that we are going to break. As you can see in this picture, we have six glucose molecules in the upper chain and six glucose molecules in the lower chain. There are three different colors present in each glucose molecule. We will discuss what does that mean. Now you can see that we have alpha-1,6 bond here that is making the branch point and all the other glucose molecules attach with each other by the bond that is alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. Now in order to break this glycogen, the first enzyme that is going to work is called as glycogen phosphorylase. Now glycogen phosphorylase with the help of inorganic phosphate molecule is going to break the bond that is alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. And it is going to work only on that glucose which is non-reducing and present at the end of the chain. So in this picture, this molecule is the end of the chain here. So this inorganic phosphate with the help of this enzyme is going to attach itself with this glucose molecule like this and make a new molecule called as glucose 1-phosphate. Now why it is called as glucose 1-phosphate? Because this phosphate attaches itself with carbon number 1 here. After that, this glucose molecule, which is now present in the end of the glycogen chain, will be called as non-reducing end. So, this glycogen phosphorylase will take another phosphate molecule and remove this glucose molecule as well and make another glucose 1-phosphate molecule. By this way, glycogen phosphorylase one by one take each glucose molecule at the end of the chain until it reaches near the branch point. Now near the branch point, at least after four glucose molecule, glycogen phosphorylase is unable to remove this glucose molecule with the help of inorganic phosphate. So at this point, it will reach the limit dextrin. Now, when we reach the limit dextrin, another enzyme is going to help here. And that enzyme is called as glycogen debranching enzyme. Now, glycogen debranching enzyme have two different functions. The first function is that it will do alpha-1,4 glucan transferase. And what does that mean is that it will take these three glucose molecule, which is represented by pink color here, and shift it to another branch like this. 
Now, only one glucose molecule that is represented by yellow color here with the bond of alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond remains here. The second function of this glycogen debranching enzyme is that it will function as a myelo alpha 1 6 glucosidase. And what does that mean is that it will break this alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond and release this glucose molecule like this. Make sense? Okay, now this chain is available to glycogen phosphorylase again and it will again start removing each glucose molecule and start making glucose 1-phosphate until it will reach another limit dextrin. So now this compound that we were breaking will be represented like this. Now we have glucose 1-phosphate here. The next step is that this glucose 1-phosphate will convert itself into glucose 6-phosphate. So now this glucose 1-phosphate with the help of an enzyme called as phosphoglucomutase will convert itself into glucose 6-phosphate. Now it is nothing else, only this phosphate molecule changes its location from carbon number 1 to carbon number 6 now. Okay, now at this point, the targets of the cell will change it itself. Remember we discussed that muscle cells or brain cells or heart cells use this process for instant energy, while liver provide this glucose to the blood in order to provide balance to the blood glucose level. So in this picture, you can see that glycogen converted itself into glucose 1-phosphate. And then this glucose 1-phosphate converted itself into glucose 6-phosphate in both the cells. But after that, in muscle cell, this glucose 6-phosphate enters the process of glycolysis and will convert itself into ATP molecule. While on the other hand, in the liver cell, Glucose 6-phosphate with the help of glucose 6-phosphatase convert itself into glucose. And then this glucose will enter the blood. So the last reaction is that glucose 6-phosphate is going to convert itself into glucose with the help of glucose 6-phosphatase. And we are looking for this molecule. So that's the end of this process. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.